Welcome back, Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV. And joining me, I'm really excited about this. What an opportunity here on the show to bring in the Augusta National Women's Amateur Champion, Lottie Wode. She's Florida State All-American. Many of you know her name already because of her previous successes, but now she is the Amateur Champion at Augusta National, and she joins us on the Jeff Cameron Show. Lottie, uh, I know you got to be tired of doing interviews, so thank you so much for joining us and doing one more after this amazing accomplishment. Thank you. Yeah. So, all right. I, I've seen everything you've said and read everything you've said and, and watched the other interviews, but I, I do have to ask you, uh, I thought it was fascinating right off the bat that you and your caddy talked about because of when you teed off and where the pins were, that there was a real good chance somebody was going to catch you and maybe even surpass you. And so I, I, it's a good game plan, right? You're mentally prepared. But I've always thought, there's a world of difference between theoretical and maybe this happens and then it does happen. And you're on the course, the back nine at Augusta, and now you're trailing and you've got to make a push and you got to, you got to make birdies. When it, when it happened, take me through your thought process when you first realized what was happening. Yeah. A, a two shot lead is, is, is not much to start the day with. And we, we had talked about um, potentially being overtaken, but obviously I was hoping that wouldn't happen. But um, when it did, um, after I bogeyed 13 um, and got two back, um, it was definitely going to be a struggle coming in. But I knew I kind of got through the tough holes um, as long as I had good tee shots on, on all the remaining holes. Like they were all good birdie opportunities. So um I knew if I could give myself some chances, I, I was rolling the ball really well on the greens that I, I could make some putts. So when people are on unbelievable runs, like Bailey went on an amazing run. And so like when, when that's happening, do, do you, I find that whenever I talk to golfers, especially folks that are at your level, the elite level, they're always worried about their own game. They, they don't worry about what they can't control. Is that hold true here? Even in this instance, when there's something, so you're, you're this close to something amazing. And does that still hold true? You're just thinking about your own game? Yeah, definitely. You, you can't get too wrapped up in what someone else is doing. Um, I obviously had all the scoreboards, so, so I did know exactly what she was doing, um, which meant I knew I had to make birdies. But um, I was just trying to focus on each shot individually and um, just trying to give myself chances was really all I could do. Um, and I mean, I didn't expect someone to shoot 66. I was expecting someone to go low, but maybe not bogey free 66, but um, it made an exciting finish. <laughs> oh, that's for sure. Yes, yeah, a very exciting finish. I think all of us were nervous for you watching it. You never showed any signs of nerves. Uh, I was I was amazed at how stoic you remained. Um, really, the only reactions I ever saw from you, uh, I think it was on 14 you made the putt. And you seemed pretty pumped about that. Um, and then and then obviously when, when you sink the final putt. You know, it's interesting. You're known, uh, for people that don't know you, as a, a great ball striker and, and wildly consistent. And obviously, you got a lot of length. And, and watching this event, I can see how far you hit the ball. So you put yourself in really good positions. Um, I have a sense that you're really proud of the way you putted here, though. And when you're putting well, how early do you realize, oh, I, I, it's there today? And what does that feel like and look like to you when you know, okay, I, I'm, I'm rolling the flat stick? Yeah, I was definitely very happy with my putting this week. Um, Ten that used to – like my long game is, is my best part, and generally my putting is, is my worst. Um, if I putt okay, like I'm usually doing pretty well in the golf tournament um, – especially this year, like I had a win in my first event, but um, like apart from that, I've been like, I've been contending every event, but just haven't quite managed to to get it over the line at a couple of second places due to not putting great. So um, after the first round of Champions Retreat, um, which are really tricky greens as well, um, I was putting really good and um, was definitely taking confidence from that, um, that finally I, I'm, I'm holding some parts and, I feel like I was talking to, to my FSU coach after I was like, pretty much all the parts that I've missed this year all kind of came together this week and went in. <laughs> yeah. So there was retribution and evened out. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious. You mentioned Champions Retreat. This is a unique event. I'll explain it for our listening audience and viewing audience. Um, you know, you play that before you play Augusta da National and, and you have to, you know, make the cut, which you have before. Um but then it's weird. Then you have a, a practice round and you got to sleep on that lead, which you've talked about. Then you got to sleep on it again, which is really weird. Nobody has to do that. Uh, I, I have two questions about that. First, 
I get the sense from your comments and some others that I've read that perhaps Champions Retreat is a, a more difficult course. Is that yeah. accurate? Yes, I would say so, yeah. What's more difficult about it? Is it the greens? Is it the, the uh, well, listen, Augusta National is very hilly, but it, I'm told Champions Retreat is too. Yeah, I would say Champions Retreat is probably a little longer um, than Augusta. Um, have a few longer shots into the greens and the greens tend to be, they were probably similar this year, but last year they, they were a lot firmer than, than Augusta and it was kind of difficult to hold the greens. Um, but what made Champions Retreat really difficult this year was uh, the second day. It was 31 hour wins and the ball was moving all over the place on the greens and off the tee. And it was, it was like I was back in England, really. Well, I was just about to say, given where you're from, you're used to being able to play with conditions uh, that are windy like that. Did you feel like that was a, a huge advantage for you? Yeah, definitely. I, I was very happy when I saw the forecast. <laughs> um, it was just like a summer's day in England. Like, I, I know how to play knockdown shots. So I've, I've been doing that since I was young. So, <laughs> yeah. So it's interesting. I'm thinking about how other people might look at that forecast and think, oh, this is not ideal. The course is hard enough as it is. And now you got to deal with wins. Whereas you're looking at it as what an opportunity this is like back home. I, I am kind of curious. I, I do know that the combination of champions retreat and Augusta national means you have to have the total game. That's got to be all the more satisfying for you to know that really it tested every aspect of your game. Yeah, they, they definitely require different things. Um, Augusta tends to be a, a drawer's golf course off the tee other than the 18th where you need to hit fade. But Champions Retreat kind of has a bit of both. There, there's a couple of really sharp left-right dog legs that I hit driver on and was cutting it around the corner. Um, and if you didn't hit driver, you're going to be quite a long way back. So you definitely have to be able to work it both ways off the tee for both courses. We're talking with Florida State All-American Lottie Wode, and more importantly right now, the Augusta National Women's Amateur Champion. You mentioned uh, it tends to be a drawer's golf course. I've always, I've never played it. I've been but I, one day, maybe, cross my fingers, uh, I've always heard that the thing you have to be able to do there is to to hit a cut off of a pull draw, of Y and vice versa and all that other stuff. Take us through for the, for the folks that are listening that watch the event and know that it's extremely difficult. Is it that much more extreme than other places that you've won at, like Carnoustie? Yeah, um, it's definitely different to how it looks on TV. When you get there, my first time last year, um, it was a lot tighter than than I originally thought. Uh, dog legs are a lot sharper and a lot more undulating. You're hitting a lot of raised greens. You can you can either be able to uh, have a lot of spin and hitting high to to stop it. Um, and yeah, just that that like 18 tee shot in particular, like you see on TV, how tight it looks, and then you get there, you're like, well, this is even tighter than than it looks. And um, you've got to just like hit it off the bunker and hope it cuts and the ball kind of disappears. You don't even really see it land and you just hope it's on, it's on the fairway. It's harrowing. Uh, listening to you describe it, it's harrowing, especially for, for people that don't know, you birdied three of the last four holes. You birdied the last two. Now there have been people uh, in the men's game, for example, Charles Schwartz birdied the last four before winning, but he won by two. Arnold Palmer, I think is the only guy that went birdie birdie to win by one in 1960. I don't know if you know that. Uh, and now you, and now you've done it, uh, which is really quite amazing. But I, I am curious after you birdie to tie, and now, you know, you need birdie to win. I, I guess I think about tee shots differently than you think about tee shots. I'm thinking I would be shivering, shaking, whereas you're just trying to execute. And boy, did you ever execute on that uh, drive. It's way down there. You're set up perfect. You had to be very proud of that moment. Yeah, I, I was driving it really well a week. So so I, I was feeling as confident as, as uh, possible on that tee shot. Um, but when I hit it, I knew it was perfect. And and it, and it went a long way down there. I only had like 125 in with that front pin on the, with the backstop behind. So once you kind of got the tee shot out of the way, I was like, well, this is this is definitely a birdie opportunity now. And so you were you rarely see people where you were on 18 for that putt. A lot of times you see it on the other side. So that was intentional. That wasn't just a good miss. That was where you were aiming, right? Yeah, I was the wind was left to right. So I was I was pretty much just aiming at the pin. If it moved a little bit to the right, it was still gonna be fine. And it stayed there and landed about pin high and then stopped kind of with the backstop and it left me a, a really good look. Circling back, last couple of things. Again, I love picking the brain of a champion here. I So I mentioned what a unique event it is, the two different courses and, qual, you know, was it, I know you answered this for Amanda, but I, I am curious about the, how you had to sleep on the lead, not once, but, but twice, two days. And how much fun could you actually have 
in between. Uh, were you able to enjoy the festivities? <laughs> yeah, I uh, I slept pretty good for the for the practice day. Um, so obviously I wasn't play I was just playing the practice round, but um, I I obviously was enjoying playing Augusta National. I, I think it's quite hard hard to not, but. I was definitely a lot, uh, very focused in that in that practice round, and we actually got the opportunity to uh, play the par three course afterwards. Oh, cool. um, but it, I opted out of that because it was straight after my round, and I wanted to um, go do some putting because um, the greens were different, which, which ultimately paid off. So I, I was kind of just um, focusing on on the next round, really. How difficult it is is it uh, to be in the moment each and every time? You looked like you had no nerves whatsoever. I know that can't be true, but it looked like you had no nerves as you sat over that putt on 18 with a chance to be the champion. It looked it lo it wasn't effortless, but it looked like you were just oozing confidence. Yeah, I, I was just trying to go, go through the same routine that I'd done on all the other parts and. Um, I had I had two for the playoffs, so so that was that was in the back of my mind too too with that putt being um, very quick down the hill. Um, but it was it was honestly a pretty good putt to leave. I, I probably couldn't leave it short, um, so I knew it would have a chance. And it it was kind of a double breaker, like a right a right half putt um, broke right at the uh, broke left at the start, and then and then came back at the end. And it was one of the easier putts, probably probably on the green. So it's interesting. You're not thinking necessarily. I mean. It I may be phrasing this wrong, but you're not necessarily thinking about making it. You're giving yourself the best chance to make it. And you know, you have two to, to, to tie, right. To, to, to force a play. So you're going to be all right. You're not thinking about, I need to make this. Yeah. I mean, I, I was obviously trying to make the part, um, yeah, sure. but it wasn't a, it wasn't a must make that I had to make that for the playoff. It, it, it was more just sign it on a good line, good pace and letting the hole get in the way. That's awesome. Final thing, Lottie, I am, I am curious. You're, you're winning a lot now and you're, you're very successful. Uh, do we want to work on uh, like a signature move? Is there going to be something that you do and develop over? I know you laughed at Tiger Woods fist pump and Jack's holding up of the, you know, you, the most you we ever see from you is you uh, maybe walk it in every now and again. We got to develop something, don't we? Or is that just not you? Yeah, no, I, I don't really like um, doing <laughs> massive fist pumps. Um, I kind of like just staying, staying kind of level-headed and not getting too ahead of myself. <laughs> I also feel like doing a massive fist bump. I'm like, that's a little embarrassing for me. So, <laughs> um, I, I, I do like a little, like, if I'm uh, playing well, just, just the, the ball looks like it's going in like a foot, two feet out. I do like a little, like, step in. Um, that's, that's what I was doing on a few of them. But on the 18th, I did do, like, a little clench. The fist bump didn't really, like, go above my waist. but it, it I saw it. I saw it. I thought for you that was a, an outrageous show of emotion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Lottie Wood, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for making time. I know Seminoles everywhere were so proud of you, and obviously everybody who loves to watch you play is celebrating the moment. So congratulations, and uh, take care. We'll talk to you down the line.